So here I am at Intel Vision. This is one of Intel's two big on events of the year. And we've just had second day keynote from CTO Greg Lavender. And one of the key aspects he's talking about is the ability to have quantum safe cryptography by 2030. Now this is really important. What's your minimum specification? In order to exchange data in the modern age, you need some form of trust. And that is mostly done through a level of what's called cryptography. You have the ability to uh, protect your data, send it to someone, and they can unlock the data. This uh, to do with keys, public, private, all that jazz. Over time, however, there's obviously attacks on the security of data, and people are looking at multiple different ways how to break those keys faster. We have lost standards for being secure at the time that they were developed, but because the rate of change of technology has increased so much over the last couple of decades, those cryptography algorithms have gone out of fashion because they're insecure. New algorithms come along, the idea being that instead of it taking days to crack, maybe it'll take months and years, and hopefully millennia and eons. Now again, computer hardware keeps getting faster and faster and faster. These are not just brute force methods anymore. They're also using clever AI enhanced methods as well, along with rainbow tables and pre-computed you know, password hash, it, hash um, outputs to try and crack password databases and get to your sensitive data, especially medical data and defense data, very important. So what do we do? We generate algorithms that make it even harder and harder and even more hard to crack that data. There's a very good XKCD on you know, password length being more of a definitive factor uh, for password security, but that doesn't matter if the algorithm by which the password is secured, salted, hashed, and the data transmitted inside your, you know, your web packets across the internet, if that algorithm isn't sufficient, then you can have your man in the middle attack, you can have your hijack attack, and uh, they can be pretty damning. Now, the problem is, as we move into more and more complex compute, quantum computers can actually crack some of these algorithms really quickly. It's a process called Shor's algorithm. And because most cryptography, most public key, private key cryptography is based on a factorization of large prime numbers, what would be that would be a pure brute force method to do in standard traditional compute on x86 on ARM on GPUs. What Shor's algorithm is is basically allows that guess for your crypto key to improve over time. And if you implement it in quantum computing, you can essentially get every answer at once. How you build the algorithm, how you uh, do your constructive interference and destructive interference. The idea is that with quantum computing, you're able to crack those, uh, crypt those cryptography keys in a matter of seconds rather than years or millennia. Public key crypto is expected to be completely broken due to Shor's algorithm, and current crypto algorithms will need to be replaced with a new class of quantum resistant algorithms currently going through standardization at NIST, the National Institutes of Standards and Technology, that one of the representative algorithms is proposed by Intel. So as a result, there is this branch of computing that's being developed called quantum secure cryptography. And it's going to be as complex as it sounds. You have to both create the algorithm and the method of transport in order to be able to, if a quantum computer was able to get hold of your data, not able to crack the cryptography, the security. So companies like Intel today announced that they're planning on building quantum safe cryptography solutions by 2030. So we're in 2022 now. So this is an eight year project. This is what Intel would normally call pathfinding. They're putting the right people in place today to find the right solutions for that sort of 2030 timeline. Now, what does that exactly mean? Not only do you have to have the methods and the algorithms in place, but you also have to have the silicon. Now, obviously, silicon is Intel's specialty. They've been doing it for decades. So being able to put cr uh, quantum crypto safe algorithms in hardware 
to be able to secure the data at every level. That's the goal here. So if there are any budding engineers looking for a way to get into the industry that won't disappear overnight, um, you know, their AI and raw compute, but also quantum cryptography, both in trying to crack it and both in trying to create solutions that can evade that sort of cracking. The end of this decade will be here before we know it. We are already making the hardware and software investments today to be ready for that eventuality. So Intel 2030, series of quantum, uh, quantum safe products. It's, uh, yeah, gonna be an interesting time to look at what comes to that. Intel is also trying to shift from both, uh, from purely being you know, a hardware vendor into a hardware and software vendor. So there is going to be expansion on the software team to do this as well. Uh, exactly what dollar amount Intel is putting into this effort, not quite sure yet. Uh, I've actually yet to see the Intel Vision demos that are downstairs right now. Uh, they open up in uh, half an hour. So if there's going to be a demo there, I'll try and put some additional B-roll in the end of this video so you can see what Intel might be doing in this area. If not, Let's put it this way. This seems to be a very secure area for any budding engineers up and coming wanting to get into this field. If you want to make things more secure, then you have to be able to beat the better and better ways that people are trying to crack that security. Quantum computers, still years out. I mean, it's, it's, it's that technology that's always 10 years away, right? However, IBM uh, recently announced that they're planning to do a 4,000 qubit machine by 2025, uh, lots of companies playing about with how to do uh, quantum computing in the cloud, how to do it at more reasonable temperatures, uh, or even just how to get algorithms from code that work in a quantum situation. What Intel and other companies have to do is be able to provide security that can beat that. There's a lot on quantum computing to be able to provide some compute that is so different to what we normally think of, of standard, uh, the standard computing model that, in a sense, anything that these quantum computers can do that is potentially uh, problematic for security, there has to be a conventional computing way of, get, of tr making normal computing even more secure. I mean, we're not going to have quantum computers uh, in our phone, in our homes, Anytime soon, you know, if I was to put money on it, definitely in the not in the next 10, 20, 30 years. 50, the problem is that you have to get them really cold to get them to work. And I don't see that viable inside a home scenario, especially not in a device you hold in your hand. So we have to solve these problems with conventional silicon, conventional software, conventional compute. We have to develop the algorithms, develop the silicon, and essentially field test it. So Intel is planning to do this over the next eight years, uh, which is, you know, like I said, their standard pathfinding scenario usually starts seven years out, especially in silicon. So this is likely going to be part of, say, the Intel Labs projects. They typically aim for these sort of long-term moonshot things. So definitely have a think, uh, if, especially if you're an engineer, where you want your career to go, because this might be an opportunity just for you.